So, uh, again, good morning, and we decided with Vladimir to present this topic because uh, a big part of my work and my research dedicated to consciousness. And in our lab in St. Petersburg, we have a big line of research in this field. And, of course, Vladimir, he is one of the leading uh, researchers in the water field. So we uh, are meeting from him from time to time in different parts of the world, not only in Russia. And uh, we discussed that, in principle, uh, water may be not only just the origin of life, but uh, that may be the origin of consciousness. And you know that in the 21st century, we are developing new signs of consciousness. And uh, next week uh, will be uh, at the conference on consciousness in Sweden, uh, led by Professor Hammerov. And this is really absolutely new line in uh, Western science. At the same time, you know that 21st century, it is developing of new signs of water. And uh, now it's 11th year that uh, we can present these signs. So, consciousness, it is a very complicated topic. In different books, you can find different uh, definitions of consciousness. So it may be a state of being, and always people think about soul when they talk about consciousness. It's a substance or a kind of a field. Um, it's a process. Consciousness can't be static. And, of course, it's an emergent aspect of matter, in particular of brain. So consciousness, from one hand, hand it is related to matter, to, and first of all, our brain will be discussing later, and to some uh, um, kind, it is related to everything what we have now. But, but, that's important, but, the common notion of consciousness, it's a property of human brain. That's the common notion. But consciousness, it's a common property of all biological subjects. And now we can prove that they all have awareness, memory, and foresight. And now we have a lot of proof of this. And uh, now we have many studies, many books, papers, published in different fields of biology, science, that plants have consciousness, that animals, even fish, lizards have consciousness, but we need to take into consideration that the no, the, this is the notion of level of consciousness. And this was for a long time controversial in the science of consciousness, so to my mind we need to um, put this in a very important topic. So, we can tell that any living being, at least organic being, has consciousness as a response to environment. And any living being can transform its behavior, uh, its functioning, in accordance with environment. Of course, next level, uh, those are living beings who, who can somehow predict their behavior and change uh, environment around themselves. Next level, of course, those are human beings, because only, only human beings can keep memory about previous generations, about previous life, and project this memory to other generations. And of course, uh, next level of consciousness, those are people who can develop new ideas, not related to the previous level of uh, society. And uh, we name it as genesis of our world of our civilization, not only Western, but worldwide civilization. And we understand that all those geniuses, they get, got their ideas from somewhere. Uh, it was not based on the previous science uh, 100%. And next level, those are people, and again, we know that some of them were real people, at least, who are able to influence all the world by their own consciousness. So, we can tell about group consciousness, and we know that this is uh, related to animals that have group behavior, like ants, bees, uh, some uh, higher animals as well, and they can behave and live only in groups. At the same time, we can tell about collective consciousness, collective consciousness of humankind. We all belong to this collective consciousness, and without this collective consciousness, it's impossible for, our, uh, for us to be a human beings. And uh, our idea that we are all related to some highest planes of reality, 
I don't want to put any labels, any names for this, but we have again a lot of evidences. And I discuss these ideas in my, several of my books, in particular The Energy of Consciousness. And we can tell about the field of collective consciousness. And we, all of us, contribute this to this field, and we, all of us, gain from this field. So, the field of collective consciousness, uh, the question, is it responsible for inspiration, recognition, healing, reincarnation, memory, telepathy? So, I mean, all these um, subtle but existing phenomena that now we try and we can study. And... The question is, what is the carrier of the consciousness field? So, if we have now a lot of proof, and I in particular have no doubt that all these moments exist because we have scientific proofs now, so what is the carrier of this conscious field? And uh, another question, what is common in all of these conscious beings? What is common? Organized water. So, only water has memory, awareness, memory, and foresight. So, you see, it is uh, very closely related to each other. And consciousness is mostly, evidently, associated with the human brain. There are no doubts. But what are the unique properties of this organ? What is specific for this human brain? Brain is the most morphologically complex living matter. But at the same time, brain, brain is one of the most wet organs in our organism. Water in the brain is most sophisticatedly, dynamically structured. And water constitutes the majority of brain matter. As in any other tissue, it is represented by both extracellular and intracellular fractions. In the brain, its specific states are provided by exclusively complex architecture of nervous and auxiliary cells. Their predominantly fiber and branching structure ensures at any moment specific structural organization of the brain water. So, we uh, believe that just this structure of water plays essential oil in forming of all tissues in the development of fetus. And then the structure of brain has specific influence on the water or liquid in the brain. So ox oxygen-dependent metabolic processes proceeding in central nervous system, much more intense than in other tissues, and provide for the permanently highly excited states of brain living matter. Continuous and highly organized and, of course, coherent change of structural and energetic states of aqueous component brain matter may provide brain with the property of being both the receptor and emitter of informational signals, in particular, but not exclusively, of, of electromagnetic nature. And you know that properties of the brain has been visualized thanks to the most sensitive technique, functional magnetic resonance imaging. And now we have a lot of research, dynamic research in fMRI. This method directly evaluates the state of water in cells and tissues. And you know that this method was invented by Dr. Raymond Damaidian in 1971, who was basing on the Gilbert Link idea of water structuring in living cells. So first, he got his uh, idea of Gilbert Link, then he reorganized this idea and he put it in practice and now we are using this uh, fantastic instrument. So, in particular, Dr. Demadian suggested that water is more organized in normal cells than in cancer cells. So, in normal signal, we can have signal from water and it constitutes organized structure. In cancer or um, unhealthy cells, Water is much more chaotic, and don't you think it looks like ideas of Professor Pollock? Very similar. So, um, uh, Jared Pollock was able to move on next level of understanding of the same issues. So, 
brain. The question is, is brain able to affect material world, represented by acquisition systems? And in our lab, we are using our own technology, electrophotonic imaging technology, that allows us to study water. And we, together with Vladimir, we propose hypothesis that water may change its properties under the influence of human consciousness. And this change may be quantitatively evaluated and transformed to other media, both by direct contact and digitally. And it's not just idea, it is absolutely clear uh, experiments. So this is our latest camera, Sony and Biowell camera. And with this camera, we are doing a lot of experiments on remote mental influence to water. So we have special water sensor. People, of course, they should understand what it's all about. And then they can send their intention uh, remotely to water. And please have a look. This is a dynamic signal of water measured uh, after, for some time. It's maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 hours, doesn't matter. And typically, if water is stable, it's quite stable signal. Then we ask someone to send intention from Japan, from Germany, from the United States. And you can see water response. So we may have this positive response. We may have negative response, doesn't matter. We may have dynamical response of water. It's all different. And of course, we use statistics to evaluate this. We did a lot of experiments with collective consciousness. In particular, it was uh, some water intention experiments done under the guidance of Lynn McTaggart, uh, who was organizing thousands of people by internet. And the part at the particular moment, they were sending intention to our lab, to water sensor. Our latest experiment was just recently. It was a group of our students, interested people in Russia, and they collected in Moscow, in other cities, it was 11 people. And at some particular moment, from 11 to 11.30, they were sending their intentions to our lab. And uh, I turned on two parallel devices in the lab at 9.40 around, and then I left and closed the door. So the system was operating in totally automatic mode, in offline regime. And I came back only by 6 p.m., turned off, and then we processed all the data by internet with our software, uh, downloaded to server. And please have a look. These green bars, those are the moments of intention. So every bar, it's half an hour of measurement. And you see it was absolutely, and those are two sensors. So both sensors responded to this moment. And we are measuring different parameters, non-independent uh, parameters. So this is the area of uh, signal or intensity of signal. And this is the spectrum of signal. Oh, stand, no, it's standard deviation of signal. And you understand it's different parameters. So you see that area decreased at the moment of intention and then again increased. So it shows us that it's not what, it wasn't random variation. And standard variation highly increased just at the moment of sending this uh, information. So we have many experiments of this kind. Of course, I don't have time to present this. But one of the m major obstacles for scientific investigation of mind-matter interaction is the absence of understanding of what is the material basis for such a dynamic entity as consciousness. Nesting in the brain and for its propagation outside its nest. We suppose that water the most evident substance in the universe, may play the key role in all consciousness manifestations. You know that uh, now main um, concepts of consciousness based on quantum principles. And I like very much this uh, quantum field theory of brain states, developed uh, uh, from, uh, started from Omizawa to Vitiello. And uh, idea is as follows that application of quantum field theory describes why and how classical behavior emerge at the level of brain activity. Because we understand that brain operates on classical level. The relevant brain states themselves are viewed as classical states. And this is the power of this approach that I like.
Similar to a classical thermodynamical description arising from quantum statistical mechanics, the idea is to identify different regimes of stable behavior, phases, attractors, and transitions between them. This way, quantum field theory provides formal elements from which a standard classical description of brain activity can be interfered. And a lot of discussion with Professor Vitiello demonstrated that it's really a very uh, significant and gainful approach that allows to give a lot of practical applications. But we know those gentlemen. And we understand that quantum field theory of water, to our understanding now, it's the most comprehensive and most uh, powerful theory, and you know that it was totally confirmed by experiments. So in both cases, both for consciousness and for water, we have same type of theory. And in uh, two and a half thousand ago, it was told by great philosophers that water is the principle of all things. All things are created from water and all things return to water. 2,000, 5,000 years ago, later, we, it is scientifically proven. Water is the second most abundant substance in the universe. Not only on the planets, but in all the universe. And it's proven now. And our planetary system, it is absolutely wet. Now water in different forms are found on all, practically all planets. And of course in our Earth we have a lot of enigmas. And now we have some uh, very interesting theory and a lot of proofs that quantity of water inside the Earth may be several times more than in the oceans. So it is still enigmatic. So I want now to go to conclusions. So consciousness is omnipresent. And um, we had this idea in our Russian cosmic philosophy, and now this idea more and more accepted by science. But water is omnipresent. It is not only here, it is everywhere in the universe. Consciousness receives and stores information, no doubt. But water receives and stores information. Consciousness is described by quantum field theory. And water is described by quantum field theory. We have different states of consciousness. We can tell about altered state of consciousness, we can tell about different phenomena related to consciousness, and all of them, it is our idea, may be related to the states of water. So, water is the carrier of consciousness. Water is responsible, uh, is responses to human consciousness. Water may transfer information from person to person. And as I've told, we can make this experiment in digital form now. Water may be a carrier of collective consciousness. Because, again, we have water in space everywhere. This wa thus, water appearing as the most abundant substance in the universe, capable of never ending transformation from ground to excited states and back. Maybe the key entity integrating the world both on inorganic, organic, and consciousness state of matter. Thank you very much for the attention. Could you say something about the sensor that you were using, and uh, what is it really measuring? What's the principle? Uh, you see, um, we have an uh, instrument, uh, it's named BioWell and BioWell.com, and we are using a standard platinum sensor that we insert into water. In parallel, another sensor, we are using a water drop suspended above the electrode, and we are studying photon and electron emission from water, stimulated by electromagnetic field. So this gives us uh, some image of light coming uh, from uh, photons. And then we ap uh, apply image processing to this principle, so we derive about 20 different independent parameters. So, because in parallel, of course, we can study uh, currents, frequency, but uh, this approach is uh, much more powerful because it gives a lot of independent parameters. And then using uh, statistics, uh, we have programs, and they, those programs are all on the Internet, 
uh, on Amazon server, then we can process all this data and have immediately practically have statistics. So uh, the advantage of this, so we can study any process for long time, unlimited time practically, for, for hours, days, months, and we can follow up uh, very interesting, um, we correlate now in our latest instrument, it is a sensor that measures in parallel humidity. Because um, it is no doubt that humidity of air has tremendous influence on many processes. And uh, we use another sensor to study uh, geophysical parameters of environment. And this is tremendously influenced by humidity, by water. I have a question about the photon energy, the, en the energy range that you can measure with, with the camera. A range of energy. Yes, the photons. Uh, you see. Photons energy. Uh, this is, we, of course, we present our measurement in joules, all our measurements. But in reality, we are measuring the energy of photons, but not, and we are measuring in the range of uh, from 380 to about 700 nanometers. And it is weak photons. They are much more intense compared with um, biophoto uh, biophotonics. But uh, that's why we are using not uh, counters, but we are using uh, special CCD cameras uh, shifted to ultraviolet area range. Why it is shifted to UV? Because uh, we are using spectrum related to um, nitrogen uh, content in the air. Because you know that in the air, the main content those are nitrogen. And nitrogen spectrum, it has a maximum at 350 nanometers. Um, I have a question. Uh, ever, have you any uh, idea about the time the information pass? I mean, it's ins instantaneous or it obeys the levels of, uh, uh, you know, uh, velocity of light? You know that in all our experiments, we had a delay. In some experiments, we had um, a response of signal before the official start. But, uh, of course, I'm not sure whether it was related to people's consciousness uh, starting operating beforehand, or it was related to some other effect that is uh, very uh, subtle and controversial. So, at the moment, I stay on the platform that we have time of intense, and we are measuring in this time of uh, reference. At the same time, of course, um, it's very easy for us to evaluate everything because we have uh, timelines, we have all statistics, and in this statistic, it's very easy to calculate any parameters. So it's an instrument, as in any instrument, you see every interval, it's half an hour. We can put this in any other interval because it's continuous signal. Hello, Konstantin. Uh, I'm Nikolai Blom. Um, thank you for a very inspiring talk. Uh, my question is more philosophical. Many of us have been brought up as uh, reductionistic, uh, objective scientists. And uh, there seems to be a paradox now if we want to study consciousness using consciousness. Um, could you comment on that? Uh, should science become more sub subjective? Uh, uh, going forward? Yes, thank you. It's a very interesting um, topic because re really in 21st century we start a real study of consciousness only because of existing of new instruments. As in uh, Galileo time, due to telescopes, he was able to study universe. Now, using fMRI, other instruments, we can study consciousness in dynamics. Because one of the main obstacles of the modern biology and medicine, it is static. We don't have instruments to study life in dynamics. Uh, maybe only heart rate variability and uh, ca cardio monitoring, nothing else in reality. And this is uh, because life is dynamic. And consciousness, it's dynamic representation of life. So, uh, to my mind, uh, I don't see contradictions because it is not just individual person who are sitting and uh, meditating in cave. It is now science. And science is powerful only when we have collective consciousness of scientists, as we do uh, now, as we can um, in, uh, generate independent data in different laboratories and conform or disapprove 
our results. And then, of course, we can generate some crazy ideas. And the more crazy the idea, the more uh, powerful would be the answer. So I see uh, is this as a new uh, step or new stage of uh, our Western development, not only scientific. Because in Western science, there are no notion of consciousness, not at all. And this is a big drawback both for biology, for medicine, and of course for life itself. Thank you. Thank you.